So I guess we're doing this. I'm going to show you every fucking tool that's in Curvify at present. And for those of you that don't know what Curvify is, it's my new asset pack where you draw curves and it makes anything. At least the point is we get to the stage where it can make anything. So let me show you the now 15 tools that are in Curvify. Yesterday there were 10 and I'm just adding more every single day. And there's a link in the description right now. It's $20. Uh, it does not get cheaper. I might make it more expensive in the future as I add more assets. So the current state of Curvify, let me show you. So uh, in the Curvify asset browser, you can see everything we have so far. Let's start uh, alphabetically with barbed wire. And by the way, each one comes with a curve or the pre-drawn, uh, but you can draw your own curve, obviously. So it makes barbed wire. Um, what it can do is you can control the gaps in the barbs, the thickness of it. Uh, one thing that uh, the competitors don't do is this one actually has a spiral. Um, output so you can draw spirally barbed wire um, and you can control the gaps in the uh, looping uh, if you are so inclined and I guess you can also pick the color of the barbed wire okay moving on uh, chain tool a lot of these are very intuitive uh, you make a chain so let me draw one beautiful a chain uh, you can make it random rotation uh, you can also control the scale, and it kind of preserves the correct uh, sizing to make the links uh, linkable, um, and the thickness of it, and also the color. So this is for your chain making needs. Now a bit more complicated, chain link fence. I'm going to hide the uh, asset. Uh, what this does is it actually makes your uh, curve discrete. So let, let me actually just edit the curve that exists already. It makes your curve discrete, so it's actually into segments, and uh, it makes a very realistic chain link fence. I made a tutorial about this on Patreon, by the way, uh, where the chains actually kind of tie in together. Uh, things to know about this one is you can control the segmenting, so how big each chain segment is, or you can get very dense, but you need to be above zero. You can get very dense, um, and uh, you can control the height of this, and you can control the color, because I see a lot of black chain link fences, at least where I am. I don't know if that means I'm in a bad area or not. Okay, moving on, uh, we have the cloud tool. This one's a bit unique, because uh, you're supposed to draw little short curves. Well, you're supposed to draw curves, not annotations. You draw little short curves, and it makes clouds oriented to your thing. So if I go vertical, you can kind of see that the cloud's going vertical. Uh, so this is a cloud generator, plain and simple. Uh, make your clouds. Uh, things to know, you can control the overall scale of the clouds. Uh, this doesn't render fast. Um, and you can control the seed of these clouds to make uh, different variations. You probably want to use denoising with this one. Um, next, we have what is going to be the first section of a lot of tools for, like, interiors. Uh, but we have the uh, curtain, uh, which, you know, you can make any shape. Uh, the curtain, you can control the length of, you can control, oh, we got a crash, boys. That's more of a geometry nodes being a heavy, heavy thing. Um, let, me, let me just open the assets as they are. Uh, we have the curtain asset where you can control the length of it, you can control the number of ruffles, you can control whether it's going to one side or the other, and you can control if there's bunching in the center, I also have amplitude and some material sliders since I made a translucent, transparent slider. Um, let me open up the asset browser so we can see. Unfortunately, I didn't save the uh, project file that I was just using to like display these. But we can work our way down. Uh, next, we have the feather. I guess they're in alphabetical order, so I know which one is next. We have the feather. Uh, the feather one is one of the more complicated. Let me actually show you the network for this one. It's one of the more complicated networks. And what it does is it makes feathers. So let me show you. Very realistic feathers, I may add. So draw your feather. You could even get crazy with it. And uh, you can make little stubby feathers, long feathers. The, the power is in your hands. And I guess... Uh, things to know about this is you can control kind of the density in terms of resolution. So you can have sparse feathers, uh, some birds have sparse feathers, or you could have very dense feathers. And you can control the seed of these, uh, the generation seed and the clumping and all this. Okay, moving on. 
Uh, we have more fences. What other fences do we have? We have the wooden fence. So this is kind of similar to the chain link fence tool where you can, uh, you know, kind of draw and it makes your uh, fence discrete. So this is an old wooden fence with some like variation in the shading and all this. You can control the number of segments, just like before, the density of the posts inside those segments and the general height. So just a general fence here. Um, also, we have the white picket fence and all of these are just available in the asset browser. You can just click and drag them. But uh, the white picket fence is the same idea. A lot of these fence tools are pretty similar. Uh, you have the segments, you have the, um, the density, and you have the height. Um, so those are fences. I wanted to make a lot of variation. Now we get into some of the cool tools. Not that we weren't already, uh, but we have hanging cables. So the way this one works is it actually plays over time, as you can see. And what it does is when you draw a curve, it will look at your two endpoints and pick the curve that dangles correctly uh, between them. So this is perfect for making cables and stuff like that. And uh, we can control the amount of droop overall, so you can have them be taut. Uh, you can actually have them be zero if you want them to be um, stationary with a speed of zero. Um, I'm just going to add a bit of droop. Uh, you can control the speed at which these are shaking, so you can have it be very slow as well. And uh, you have the color of these cables. And if you were to make each one its own Geonodes object, you're free to make a bunch of different colors, right? So if I just take this, I duplicate it, I unlink and I make this like white. Now we have white and uh, yellow cables. And you can also control the radius of these, although I wouldn't make them too big or too small. Okay, moving on, a lot of tools to get through today. Uh, we have the rainbow tool, which actually complements very well with the um, the cloud tool. You can make like a cloud at each endpoint. Uh, what this one does, as you expect, is you draw two points and it picks the rainbow that fits in between. Again, looking at the orientation of which direction you're drawing in. Uh, you can control the arc, because you know rainbows are actually circles. And the size and the saturation, how intense the rainbow is, and how transparent it is. So this one is for you. I, it's a very specific tool, this one, but I just wanted to include it since it seems so obvious. Uh, one of the more complicated tools is we have the river generator. Um, I want to show you that this is another tool that plays over time. You can see there's flow, and it has the foam going through it and all this. Uh, this is a river generator. And again, all of this is for just $20, all these assets. Some of them are worth $20 on their own, I would say. Uh, you can make rivers. One of the cool things about this one, I like doing the circular one, because then the river flows in a circle. <laughs> uh, but some things you can control are the width, and it will auto-generate rocks for that. So it's the width of it, uh, the speed at which it flows, the density of the rocks. So you could have a lot of rocks or few rocks. Uh, the general rock size, uh, the general color of the water, so you can have it be like greenish water or murky water, and the distribution of these rocks. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have the road generator, also a very useful tool. Most of these settings for this one is in the material. Um, let me just subdivide this so we can have the road going this way. Uh, notice that the UVs for this one kind of go with it, and it will auto-generate the correct number of lines uh, that it needs. Uh, so for this road generator, uh, mostly material settings. What color do you want the inner strip to be? What color do you want the outer strip to be? Uh, do you want there to be gaps, or do you want it to be a solid line? What's the density of these? Um, and also, uh, do you want any offsets so you can uh, have like different kinds of patterns as well? Um, we're getting to the end here. Uh, this is an interesting one. This is roll along curve. What you do is you basically pick an object. I pick Suzanne and it will roll along the curve. Uh, we can mess with the orientation that it rolls. I would keep it as is because it's oriented correctly. And notice that it's actually like using the chin to roll. Uh, so it will roll along any curve. And just to show you, I'm like extending this. And by the way, if you make this longer, I've added a controls to control the uh, speed at which it rolls and the, um, the speed at which it turns as well. 
So you can uh, customize it to your object because it turns out that each object has a different rolling constant. It kind of depends on its circumference in some sense if you were to ray cast it. So you can control all of that until it looks correct. Uh, you can control the time offset. So if I set this to one, it will wait one second and then start rolling. Um, this works for any object, like I said. So you can take your Suzanne. I'm gonna replace Suzanne with a cube and make sure to center this object. And now you have a cube that's rolling. Again, each object has its own like rolling constant. So for this one, I changed the roll speed to three. Okay, so roll along curve. And by the way, you can draw curves along surfaces. So you could have it roll along a surface as well. Um, I didn't make a tool for projecting onto surfaces yet uh, because that's kind of innate in the drawing tool. You can do that. Sorry about the dog outside. Uh, of course, we have to have a rope tool. Uh, the rope tool updates uh, with its length, of course, so you can make uh, big bunches of ropes, you can make nooses, you can make whatever thing you want to make with the rope. You can make drawbridges, um, things to know, and there's little hairs as well, just tiny details. Things to know about this is you can control kind of the density of the spin, so you can make it look more like a churro uh, if you wanted to, and the uh, radius of the rope, so you can make very thick uh, rope, so I'm trying to untangle. There we go. So you you can make a very thick rope that uh, doesn't spin that much on itself, or you can make any kind of rope. Uh, moving on to our last tool, we have the snow tool, which is one of my favorites, actually. Uh, let's put this in rendered mode. It's a little hard to see since these particles are small, uh, but what, the way this one works is you just draw, and it starts emitting snow uh, wherever you want to. So if you want a big surface, you can just go like this, and now we have a lot of snow. Uh, things to know about snow is you can increase the spread, like how far the emitter uh, reaches. You can change the density, so you can make it twice as dense or half as dense. Uh, you can change the height, which right now what it's doing is it's only going to a certain height. But you can make the particles only go a certain height or way further if your scene is bigger. So how far does it fall? The speed at which it falls, the randomness for it. Uh, if you set randomness to zero, it will look very simple, right? But if you want it to add a bit of wind, you add randomness, and we have wind direction for which way it's flowing. And of course, you have the size of the snow particles. So that is every tool that took a while, you noticed. Uh, that is every tool that is available in Curvify right now. Uh, today, I'm actually working on more tools, and uh, I'm going to be updating it forever, is the idea, until I get to 100 assets at minimum. Uh, the price may change. So right now, it's the lowest it's going to be. And when you buy, uh, you get free updates forever. So this is the cheapest you can buy what is potentially 100 assets. So link in the description. Thank you for watching. And thank you everybody who's already bought Curvify. There's already been like a lot of you. <laughs> so thank you. I'm glad that I can work on something that's GeoNodes related that people like.